Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Ironclad, and it's from Alcyon Creative. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. You can do so by following the link at the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Now, Ironclad is a fully cooperative, scenario-based game. And you and the other players are uh, crew members of the ship called the Ironclad. That's where the name of the game comes from. Uh, it's this giant space battleship that is sort of a, a mercenary ship. Uh, you are floating in between different factions in the, the galaxy that is depicted in this universe. And you're just trying to go through different scenarios, uh, working your way through it, completing missions, and gaining reputation and losing reputation with different factions. Along the way, you recruit more heroes to crew your ship. You uh, get upgrades for your ship and have encounters with different uh, space anomalies and other spaceships. Uh, have fighter jets that you can equip on your own ship. Lots and lots of stuff in this game. So much so that I can't possibly go over every single thing. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the game with a prototype copy of it. Which means that it's going to look different in the final version. Again, I can't go over every single detail. Definitely go to the Kickstarter page to find out even more details. But in any event, we'll take a look. Then we're going to come back and we will discuss it further. Ironclad is a fully cooperative game for one to three players. You will be taking control of the ship called the Ironclad and attempting to complete a campaign of ten different scenarios. Not only will you have to survive and meet the parameters of each scenario, but you'll also have to make significant choices that can have ramifications for future scenarios. A simple tutorial will be used for this preview, but Ironclad will have a full campaign book with detailed and varied scenarios. For setup, you'll lay out the sector tiles the scenario calls for in the depicted layout. You'll also place face down intel tiles as directed, and a figure representing the ironclad itself. Sector tiles are in clusters of three or four, depicting different celestial bodies, hazards, or empty space, or individual planets. Intel tiles represent unrevealed hazards, obstacles, enemies, items, outposts, and most importantly, objectives for certain scenarios. Reference cards are placed off to the side for the particular intel encounters you can have in a scenario. The centerpiece of any game of Ironclad is the ship itself, with most information being contained on the ship mat. This is where you keep track of your general crew, morale, the ship's hull, salvage, energy, ammo, and the current turn of the game. You'll also have a set of section status tiles for later when you may take damage to the Ironclad. Each player will take control of one of the three main sections of the ship, the bridge, the hangar, and the weapons, indicated by their order cards that list what actions you can take. With two players, you'll have to split up duties, and with one player, you'll have to take command of all three. Along with the order cards, you'll get heroes for each section, along with a set of exhaustion and wound tokens. Heroes have one or two classes, such as captain, pilot, engineer, etc., and they often must be exhausted in order to activate certain events and special areas or use special abilities or to add their relevant skill bonus to a check you need to make, like an engineer adding her score and that skill to a check you need to make to control the ship. Every hero also has a unique special ability, either active or passive, that can give you a big boost during the game. However, in almost all cases, using a hero for anything will exhaust them. They need to be unexhausted to be used again, unless you choose to wound them to act again, which is even worse and requires healing. Let's look at a few elements of the Ironclad mat in more detail. As the Ironclad takes damage, you'll roll the die to determine which section is hit. If the section takes enough damage, you will need to place status tiles on them, but a section can only take up to 5 damage. Any spillover after that and subsequent damage is dealt directly to the hull. If the hull ever drops below 1, the Ironclad is destroyed and the players lose. If the Ironclad has a full crew, you'll get 2 actions per turn. But as you lose crew, that dips to a minimum of one action. Lose too many crew, and it starts getting taken out of your morale instead. High morale gets you yet another action per turn, and a bonus to your rolls. But if morale bottoms out, you take a penalty instead, and you'll have to resolve a special mutiny event. Salvage can be used for repairs, and ammo is important for certain weapons. If your energy level is full, your shields are up and can take damage instead of the ship. 
but you will often have to use energy during the game to activate certain ship functions. Every time you do so, you must remove an energy marker and suffer a negative effect. Modules can also be attached to the Ironclad to improve its systems. Every turn of the game, you'll have anywhere from one to three actions available depending on the status of your crew and morale, as I described before. You'll keep track of them with communal action tokens. Remember, this game is cooperative and you'll all be working together during the turn rather than taking individual turns. Every turn of the game is broken down into five phases. First is recon. Wherever the ship is on the sector map, you can flip one adjacent intel token over to see what you'll have to face there. Next is moving. You can move the ship to an adjacent sector. While it is dangerous, if you move on to a sector that has not yet had its intel token flipped over, you can do so immediately and resolve it. However, when you get to a new sector, you must first resolve any cosmic conditions. These are inherent features of the sector. Everything from a black hole that damages the ship to a nebula which blocks recon. Then you resolve the intel token by referring to the appropriate card. This usually involves some kind of challenge, using a dice roll on potential use of your heroes. Some challenges are color-coded, depending on the threat level of the scenario. If you survive the encounter, you discard the intel token. The next phase is resting, which lets you unexhaust two heroes, followed by healing, which lets you convert a hero's wound to exhaustion. The last phase is repair, where an engineer can be exhausted together with spending a salvage unit to repair one point of damage. Now that covers the very basic rules of the game, but of course going into a regular campaign will introduce many advanced concepts. At times you'll be called on to fight other spaceships and mechs, or to acquire them for use by the Ironclad's own pilots. Much like heroes, ships have their own special abilities and skills. Attacking the enemy or evading their attacks requires using hero skills, any other modifiers you can muster, and a dice roll. An important rule of the game is that a 6 is always considered a success and a 1 is always a fail, regardless of modifiers. In the larger game, reputation is a huge consideration. There are 5 factions in the game, and as you complete missions in each scenario, you'll either gain or lose reputation with different factions. Gain enough reputation, and a faction will become friendly with the Ironclad and may eventually even consider them staunch allies. But by doing this, you will undoubtedly make enemies of other factions that are opposed to your new friends. In fact, some of the heroes that you may be able to recruit for the crew already belong to these factions, and you gain access to them when your reputation goes up within those factions. If it plummets, however, they can become enforcers, working for those factions and making life difficult for you whenever you go into their space, even if they don't openly oppose you. Villains, on the other hand, are actively trying to impede and destroy the Ironclad, and they will spawn when your faction reputation gets down to sworn enemy status for those factions. You may come afoul of them either in space combat or intel operations. Your relationship with factions is also relevant for when you come across planets and space stations. You can't even enter the sectors of these ports if you're considered an enemy, and only certain facilities at these ports will be open to you even if you are neutral or friendly. For instance, neutral or higher reputation will let you stock up on salvage, ammo, or gear at the trader. Being friendly will get you access to the guild, where you can hire new heroes for your crew. And being a full ally will grant access to the tech center, where you can permanently upgrade the Ironclad or your fighters and mechs. You'll need credits to do any of these things, as well as to keep your heroes employed and deployed for each scenario, and this cost can increase when you promote them, increasing their abilities. There is much, much more to cover for Ironclad, but that should give you a good overview of how to play the game. Well, the first thing you notice about Ironclad is obviously the theme. There's a lot of uh, cooperative scenario-based games. That's why I actually phrase that that way in the beginning because it is its own genre at this point, uh, these campaign-based games. But most of those campaign games are either fantasy or science fiction. Every player takes control of just like one uh, unit and you just like, you know, uh, skirmish-based or tactical combat-based games. And they all, even though they're all, I, I like some of those games and they have like very... Um, uh, unique aspects to some of them, they do feel like the same thing, definitely thematically, after a certain point. In Ironclad, it's so unique because you, you just you're actually crew members of this one ship, 
and you're taking control of different stations. And that's why the game it has an unusual uh, number of players, one to three, uh, and that it can be played so easily as a solo game. These are all very unique aspects of it together with that theme. And the fact that you can cr uh, get crew members for the ship and customize the ship and uh, have all these space encounters, it really feels like a hardcore uh, space-faring sci-fi game. And while, there, again, there are games that are in the broad science fiction category and space-faring, but not quite like this. Uh, and definitely, it, there's so many homages that it's, uh, it's paying homage to, uh, like you know, Star Blazers or uh, Macross and so on, Robotech, so on and so forth. Uh, so, but, but it is its own thing. I mean, the art style uh, is definitely paying homage to those things as well, but it, is, it has its own unique feel to it. Um, in its own unique storyline and the factions and so on and so forth. And then as far as the actual gameplay goes, again, I couldn't go over every single thing that's here because uh, like any good campaign-based game, uh, there's just so many different ways that you can play and make choices and have those choices carry over, especially with the reputation system. Uh, of the game where you have all these different factions sort of uh, if you gain a reputation with one you're probably going to make another faction very angry and you're not going to be able to take full advantage of their ports or maybe not even go to them at all and they may have villains hunting you down so you have so many different things to worry about and yet you know your first game of this might be tricky to set up you definitely are encouraged to go through the tutorials um, and it might take you a little bit of time to get through the rules for the first time uh, but, really, the game is not complicated when you actually sit down to play the sessions. I mean, that's the way that the game is built, is that you are going to, uh, in between sessions, you, you know, you, you'll tr go to different ports, you'll upgrade your ship, you'll get heroes, you'll recruit, uh, you'll know what you're going to do, and these things will carry over from scenario to scenario throughout the campaign. And then, so then when you actually sit down, you know, okay, here's what we need to do. We've set up the sector map, here's the actions that we have, and here's our goal, and here's how we have to get to that goal. And just, you know, you only have a certain amount of actions per round, and everything happens simultaneously. So everyone is involved. I think that's an important thing, too, is that a lot of these types of games can be very drawn out. If it's not your turn, you're sort of sitting there waiting for the other player to go through all the different things that they can do. But in Ironclad, you are all acting in the same round, same turn, and have to have to be active. You have to be talking to the other players and deciding what to do and how best to spend your actions. And, you know, again, assuming that you're playing with two or three players, this can be played solo, you, ha you have your purview, your heroes, and your station, and you need to figure out how you're going to best contribute to the well-being of the ship. And it's not just about keeping the ship from exploding, although that's important. It's also about thinking long term about the factions about getting upgrades for the ship because scenario to scenario it's going to get more and more difficult uh so there's a lot going on in this game but definitely if you are a fan of these types of games the broad category of cooperative scenario based games if you're a fan of hard science fiction but especially uh that based on you know anime series like macross uh in northern america as robotech and just that whole genre, this is one of the few games in town, literally, <laughs> that you can uh, sink your teeth into to get those kind of feels. So there's just not a lot of other things like it. But of course, as always, you don't need to take my word for it. Uh, as I said, I couldn't show you everything the game has, and that's why you should go to the official Kickstarter project page and find out way more than I could even show you here and see what the final game may look like. You can follow the link in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those links will take you there, find out more information, and hopefully consider backing the project. That is Ironclad from Alcyon Creative. Thank you so much for watching and as always for supporting our sponsors. Take care.